So that leads me into my next question is like, um, let's say I'm a beginner collector and I'm starting to get into collecting and I'm, I'm looking to build my collection basically. So we have a pretty good idea of like what you're into as far as the history of it and like you, you do the research on it. Mm -hmm. um, where, would, where would you go as a beginner collector if you were starting today? Like, I mean, it's kind of a biased answer because I would say collectwithina.com. Well, but, I mean, we're, we're one resource. I mean, there's other resources out there. Sure, but like if I'm, like not even just a specific website, but mm -hmm. like, I guess the, the better question to ask would be, what, what, are, what are some common things that beginner collectors need to, need to some pointers for beginner collectors? Like where, where how do I start and how do I, how do I, how do I proceed from there? Right. Uh, I would say the first the the first thing that anybody needs to decide is what kind of budget you want to use on this kind of thing, right? Okay. Um, because there, there's a wide range, and there's no reason that you need to uh, avoid collecting because you can't afford the three thousand dollar katana that you really want. Yeah. You know, not that's not for everybody. Um, it's not meant to be, you know, and that's not to say that the three thousand dollar katana is, you know, ten times better than the three hundred dollar one. That it's not how it's not how these things work. The, right. the increases for, as prices double, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not direct, right? You're, you're increasing quality. It's, it's incremental increases in quality that get more and more expensive on top of like that $300 like kind of sweet spot. Yeah. At about a $300 range, I think you get a really good value. And then as you start spending more, you gain something, but at greater expense, right? Yeah. So, Getting some of these really high price things is out of a lot of people's budgets, um, so you can discount that. It, there's no reason to focus on that. It's not like those are great and these are terrible. That goes back to the beginning of like what that. we were talking about with with how you started Cult of Athena. It was mm -hmm. like it was either very low end, like fantasy stuff, yeah. nothing in the middle, no yeah. like this whole gray area, and right. then like custom, like what you were just talking about with a very expensive. Three thousand yeah. dollar katana. Yeah, it's like you got one or the other. There's nothing. There's no middle ground of like yep. measuring like where I want to go with my collection. Right, and that that brings up something that's really great right now. I mean, we have, and I, by we I mean all of us. I don't mean Cult of Athena. I mean everybody. We all have more access to high quality, lower cost, functional swords than ever. Right. You know, in in the years leading up to this, you know the. There weren't as many brands, there weren't as many options, there weren't as many sword types represented. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were vague historical reproductions in the earlier days, right? So you'd get Roman sword that was vaguely Gladius-like, right. but didn't follow any of the actual like, like historic patterns. Uh, nowadays, because of the interest, because of the kind of things that we do and because of the interest of the customers, Right. And, and the more, um, more educated customers that are out there and demanding more and more authenticity in, in these products, more manufacturers have jumped into the market, which has helped keep, helps keep competition, helps keep the prices lower. So now, you know, that, that $300 kind of mid-range price, yeah. huge, huge uh, amount of different products that we can select from there, which is great, you know. So there's more access to this stuff than ever before, which, which is excellent. You know, so now you can get a functional tall wire where try to get that 20 years ago. You know, it's yeah. very difficult. Or any of these other, especially now that things are starting to get into the more lesser known, and more exotic types of swords, which right. is one of the things that we're trying to focus on here actually is um, putting more of that kind of stuff into production, mm -hmm. stuff that... 99% of the population wouldn't know about, but you know, there's that 1% of historians or sword collectors who are looking for these types of specific things that have been overlooked by a lot of manufacturers. Right. And we're hoping to kind of nudge our way into those types of areas too. But I think I got way off track on whatever you'd ask me. <laughs> I asked you just a strategy of like beginner collectors. Beginner like, collecting. Kind of yes. elaborate on that too and yes. gave some insights. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind the extra. Right. I can, I can actually get into that. So beginner strategy. Like right. you're starting today. Like you know, where do you, where do you yeah. go with a beginner collection? I would say that we'll get back to what I meant to start with, which was to start with the kind of budget that you can work with. Yeah. Right. 
So, um, you know, if, you, if you've got it, you could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on swords if you want. It's all out there, you know. You get, make, decide what you can spend, right? Yeah. You don't have to do that. You can start small. You can get a few items. You can just get a couple of pieces that you like. Um, so budget is your first thing. Know what level you can buy at. And if that means one really nice sword or it means a dozen uh, lower-end items just because you want to decorate the office, or it means a handful of mid-range swords, whatever works for you. It's right. perfectly acceptable. Um, so price is your, your first thing. Uh, the next thing is what is the type of sword that, that interests you, mm -hmm. you know, and for whatever reason. You know, maybe you have a, uh, a cultural, uh, cultural significance for a certain type of sword, maybe from your ancestry, or maybe it's just from your favorite movie. You right. know, maybe you know, you're, you're more of a, a Westerner, but you're really into anime or something, mm -hmm. and you really like Japanese culture and katanas. Go for that, you know. Right. Nothing wrong with that. We don't um, we don't discriminate, you know, right. as far as like trying to pigeonhole this type of person can only buy this type of sword and this swords are for everyone. This is a it's a it's a world culture that you can kind of pinpoint different little areas with, but there's a yeah, common everybody can everybody can play along, you know, mm -hmm. because pretty much every culture and every sword or every geographic area and every culture had some sort of history with bladed or edged weapons. So mm -hmm. you know you can you can pick and choose from whatever you like. So price is uh, your budget is important. Um, the type of collection you like and whatever whatever dictates that to you is important. And then it's really just if certain aspects are important to you. Like, are you buying swords because you just want to collect them and you don't really intend to do test cutting or anything? Yeah. You can go with a certain type. You know, you don't have to go with higher quality or higher end steels and things like that. You can go with maybe a lower end temper or something. Um, that'll save you some money if, if you're just going to decorate with them. Uh, are you looking to do martial arts? Are you looking to do um, test cutting and things like that? Forms and stuff right. like that. Which you might want something a little more durable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, that would be important. Or are you looking to do like fully armed and armored combat, in which case, you know, combat sports where you're going to want blunted weaponry, mm -hmm. you know, which serves a very specific purpose. Um, you know, that's an option as well. So those, I think, are the three most important things. You know, what kind of budget you have, what kind of, um, what use are you going to put these things to, if any, and um, then just really what is exciting to you. You know, mm -hmm. what type is, what's the one that you look at and, you, and it just calls to you, you know, right. for whatever reason. You know, that's, that's it. And you can grow from there. If you want to get more, you get more. If you, it, you just want one, just get one. You know? Yeah, that's you know? true. And if you don't want any, you're probably not watching this. So. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's how it was for me. Like, like coming in here, like, was it four years ago now? Like, was starting the shipping department. I didn't really have exposure to other cultures other than Filipino cultures, right, really. Yeah. So, like, that was like my big niche and everything. But then coming into this and being, you know, like being Austrian, German, and all that, and being, you know, exposed to like things like Albion arms and armor. Hanway and all that, I was like, I really like arming swords. I didn't know that before. Yeah. And like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be this, you know, crazy answer why. It could just be, I just really like arming swords of different yeah. cultures. Like, I like, like some of the Hungarian sabers or some of the Hungarian arming swords I've seen. Um, it's just all out there. I mean, that's the thing. Whether it's Albion or not, or it's, a, it's this mid, mid range company, mm -hmm. it's a Hanway one, I figured out through. Partially your enthusiasm, and also from the, from handling them and shipping when we're doing like quality control. I also really like Viking swords, but yeah. it's like it's just this. You know, those are kind of niche, but there's so many different directions you could go with it, and that's what is kind of exciting with it. You you, you have so much room to play with, like yeah. where you want to go. Right, with it. and you can start in one place, and it kind of leads you in different directions, kind of like you were saying. You know, I kind of came to it from different perspective. 
um, because I was uh, originally and historically interested in European swords, so I didn't have a lot expo of exposure to Filipino weaponry right. until later on as we started growing and we started carrying those types of lines, mm -hmm. you know, and then I got more exposure into that. So I came from the opposite way and we kind of meet in the middle with our mutual love of all these types of things. Right. You know? That happens with a lot of people, you know, you start somewhere and then you start realizing that, you know, like let's just say you start with a Viking sword and you're like, mm -hmm. I like Viking swords. And you start realizing that those Viking swords evolved into the early medieval swords. And you're like, oh, well, that's very similar, but with a different hill. Um, we've kind of covered like how you got into swords and everything ever since mm -hmm. you were a kid. Um, how you got into um, starting Cult of Athena, starting to do your own designs and everything. Mm -hmm. When it comes to designs, like, what do you, like, when we go to, like, more of the personal collection side of things, okay. what are you into as far as a personal collection? So, like, when you started... Um, Let's take it off of there. Like when you started, like what well, you said before, like you were into Viking swords and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Not just pigeonhole you into that, but like I've worked for a couple of years, and anytime you give me a sample, you're always really excited once a Viking yeah, sword. Right. You're like, look yeah. at, look at it. You know, yeah. Like so, what are you, what are you into, and like what do you, what like you really like into as far as collection goes? All right. Well, it's it's actually pretty diverse what I like. Okay. Um, because I because I have exposure and access to so many different things. Um, it's broadened my my interest in a lot of different like cultural weapons that I wouldn't have normally really thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so obviously, like like most people, you kind of start in one place. Your your understanding of swords in general is going to be rather small. I mean, people aren't born with understanding of different cultural swords and things like that. Right. So a lot of people. Uh, not usually our customers. Our customers are, get to be pretty so sophisticated, but you know the general population. They kind of think of like swords, like there's this sword time, and the, yeah. all that's the time that everybody had swords. Yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah. a it was like a hundred year span that there were swords and then there wasn't. And then so, guns. And then yeah, guns just showed up. <laughs> that's kind of how people think about it. Obviously, that's not how it was. Right. I mean, we're talking thousands of years of sword development. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I've kind of developed an appreciation for like a lot. I have favorites pretty much amongst every time period and every culture and everything. But that being said, there are still certain things that really I gravitate to when I see it. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, like you mentioned, I really do like Viking swords. I like the simplicity, mm -hmm. yet the the elegance and the the extent to which they would embellish these things, right? Right. Like we don't see a lot of that in a lot of the reproductions. We see rather simple versions of most of the, the a lot of the Viking swords that are out there. Yeah. Whereas, like, the originals would have a, a lot of, like, silver wire inlay and sometimes precious stones and things. To, uh, to All right, so we kind of talked about, like, the history of, like, your history, <laughs> rather of, like, how you started from a kid, like, being into swords and into history and everything. Yeah. Um, and like more of the business side of things, but sure. I want to I want to start to go into like you as far as like what are you personally interested in? Like what are you into as far as swords? Because you can get your hands on basically anything yeah. <laughs> when it right, comes to right. like whether it's custom stuff or stuff that you can get like just at a different price point. Yeah. Um. But what do you like? What are you into? Right. Okay. Well, yeah. So basically, um, I have. Because I have exposure and uh, access to so many different things from so many different cultures, uh, I've, I've really started to develop an appreciation for swords at, from every different types of culture and every different period of history. So it's very difficult for me to just have a, fav like a single favorite or right. one type now. Right, so I can uh, I can look at like an Indian talwar and and uh, really appreciate a really well made one mm -hmm. and 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 love that. Whereas I can also look at you know a, a Scottish what we call a claymore or um, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's something else. But <laughs> yeah, but um, I can I can appreciate that. I can appreciate a gladius. You know, all of those sure. things. Um, but even despite that, there are, there are still certain types that have like a, a that I really gravitate towards. You know, um, one of those being Viking swords, as you had mentioned earlier. Um, I really do like Viking swords quite a bit. Uh, I think probably one of the things I like about them is the the simplicity of them. Mm -hmm. They're 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 rather 
simple designs in, in most regards. You don't get the complex hilts and things. You don't get very complex blade structure compared to like later European swords. Mm -hmm. They were rather simple for what they are, but at the same time, very complex. You know, with they had to deal with inferior materials in a lot of cases. They had to use like bog iron to make their, their swords and they were able to develop around that with pattern welding and, and, and the tech, different techniques that they would use. From, so from a historic perspective, I find that fascinating, right? And that kind of translates over to just the, the the designs themselves that I really like. I really gravitate towards that. I do have um, Swedish ancestry as well, so cool. you know there's there's that. So you know I I really like the Viking swords. Um, early medieval, it's kind of a good extension of that. Um, right. I like the the simple early medieval swords, like a good Type Ten, is like kind of the classic like. Knight sword, right? You know, I really yeah. like that. Um, I, as far as like one of my interests go, I I'm very interested in um, ancient world history. Okay. So you know the the Greeks and the Romans, uh, I do study that a lot. So I like those. I like I like the Greek swords. I like the Roman gladius for sure. Um, the different types. They're one of my favorites. You know so. Those are those are probably my main things. Like, I appreciate a lot of the Asian weaponry, uh, specifically like the the katana and some of the the Chinese swords. I appreciate those very much. They don't um, resonate with me the same way as I'm some of the European you. ones. But I do have some in my collections. You know, okay. there are some really great examples of them. Right, and it's it, I. In a way, I feel like no sword collection is complete unless you have at least one katana. Anyway, yeah, you know it it's is undeniable. It's like, kind of a like a quintessential sword, so mm -hmm. you know it's always good to have a representation there as well. Right, know, especially if you want a a diverse world collection, which is kind of the way I think. You know, mm -hmm. um, which um, I know that later we're going to talk about different types of collections and things. And yeah, but can, whatever you want to kind of extrapolate onto yeah. that, but. Well, I mean, I guess while we're talking about it, I mean, that's, that's kind of how some people do collect. Some people collect, um, like, geographically, like, you know, mm -hmm. like, they might be, I'm really into, say, Japanese weaponry, right? Mm -hmm. Like, not me personally, I'm saying, but that could be a, a type of collection, you know, whereas right. some people hyper-focus on one thing. They might say, oh, I'm only interested in swords from this time period and this geographic area. Which I didn't know existed before working here. I didn't know people were that particular. Yes, about it. yeah. And, and that's something a lot of people who aren't very familiar with swords don't really understand, is that the, uh, the diversity amongst the sword as, as a weapon is, is very great. And people who aren't very exposed to that think of it as like one thing. There are swords, or maybe they think two. There's, there's the European sword and the katana. That's it. Yeah, and they, Nothing they, else. <laughs> they don't really think about it. And I know that's not our customers. Our customers understand this. Right. But I'm talking about like, you know, people who aren't, don't really pay attention to this. Right. You know, they don't really understand how how much, um, how much how much how many different types exist and how mm -hmm. how many time periods that covers and, and how great a time length in history swords were the main primary weapon you know mm -hmm. it covers a thousands of years so you got a lot of development in there so because of that it does open for very hyper specific types of collecting you know so you you can get people who only want things from the ancient world and even if you were to limit your collection to say i only want roman swords your collection's not going to end if at three right. swords, you still got a lot of, of variety to go through. Yeah, you know, same with Viking swords. If you if you if that's your thing, you know, you're a modern day Viking. You've got that heritage. You're like, I want to represent my heritage with with, some, with like a Viking sword. Yeah, who stops at one? I mean, you can get a Viking sword, but sure. then you start realizing, you know, there's not just one Viking sword. Right. There's dozens of different types in in the typology. And variations amongst that and, and everything. So you can right. build a pretty extensive collection 
along any of these different types of trajectories, which is which is kind of cool. So really, the cra the the history and also the craftsmanship of that time period is something that's kind of pulled into like why you collect certain blades. So it could be like it the is. history of it, like the, your heritage, yeah. like yeah. that would be more of like an example of like a hyper specific collection yeah. regarding that. Uh, <laughs> into like, you know, hyper focused like collections and like whether that be heritage, how do you collect? We already know right. what you're into, so like how how do you organize yeah. the things that you like? Right. I take I take a different type of perspective and this is another way that, that some customers collect. I tend to do more of a like a world representative type collection, right? And uh, I've talked to other collectors who do similar things, where they kind of want to have a sword that represents maybe every different time period or every different culture or something like that. So I tend to collect more in that way. Okay. So I, I rather than even though I like really like Viking swords, I won't. I don't want to get like. Two dozen Viking swords only, right? Same one. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I will, I will take like a couple. There's, there'll, there'll be a couple of Viking swords I really like. Yeah. Where and there'll be a couple of uh, Chinese swords that I really like. There'll be a couple of Japanese swords. There'll be a couple of Indian ones. You know, I I try to get things from different areas and different time periods, different classifications. What what I feel is the maybe the the best represent representation of that culture or that time period or the best quality one that I see if it really stands out I, I tend to I tend to go towards things like that so the I, best res representation based on um, well knowing you based on you researching it then right so like yeah that kind of goes into advice on collection but yeah exactly for me historical accuracy is, is very important um, because of the because of the direction I'm coming at this from, right? right? Like, I collect swords because of a, a love of history and understanding of history and, and uh, researching history and such. So to me, one of the primary things that I look for in the swords that I decide or one that I want to add to my personal collection is historical accuracy. Right. I want them to be as close to those originals as I can. Um, so I really like that. Um, that's not how everybody collects, you know. But for me, that that that's an important factor. Um, some people will be will lean more towards maybe extreme durability, mm -hmm. you know, because they want to do a lot of heavy cutting or or they want it for post apocalyptic scenarios, which is we got know, the chopper right. We're gonna do a later video with the chopper. <laughs> yeah, you guys haven't seen this one before. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, some some people gravitate more towards that. Where, but that's hyper that's hyper specific collecting. It is. Still. It's just a different niche, right? You know, it it depends on what your need is or what you desire, right? Right. Some people want something that really looks cool. Some people want things that have a a connection to the past in accuracy, and some people want a heavy duty chopper, mm -hmm. and not not the chopper. That's yeah. something different. But, <laughs> Some people just want a heavy-duty anti-zombie weapon, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a market, there's a niche for that, and there are products designed specifically for that, you know, where right. they'll use more, a little bit more modern materials. You know, if you swap out your wood grip for some to uh, type of polycarbonate or something, mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it's not going to crack, it's not going to shrink, you know, you don't have to worry about humidity. It's not a historic weapon anymore, but it's a right. his, historically inspired modern weapon. Without the history of it, th those wouldn't exist because there right. would be no frame of reference from the past exactly. of like the functionality and like even the shape of it or like yep. why things were yeah. constructed. So the history, in in some case or another, is already integrated. It's into built that. in. Yeah. yeah. A good example is like Cold Steel's Gladius Machete. Right. Sure. It's a, it's a popular item. It's a great it's a great item. It's it's relatively cheap. It's durable, it's functional. It's not a historic Roman gladius, but right. it's shaped like a Roman gladius. Its design is inspired by the Roman gladius, but you know, they you get a you get an injection molded handle, you mm -hmm. know, which is simple and easy, easy to maintain, you know. And my collection and my needs would change depending on what I was doing, right? Like right. if I was if I was going into the post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic wastelands, right. I wouldn't be going for historical accuracy, right? I'd be going for durability. And a respirator too would be nice too. That would be that would help. Yes. <laughs> In that case, you want something that you know holds up. 
Yeah. So you can split skulls. You know, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's it. In, the, in those cases, modern materials win. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for preservation and that hypothetical right. scenario, preservation and like what they're what they're designed for, yeah. absolutely. If I the mean, ancient Romans could injection mold plastic, they would have. Yeah. But they couldn't. So they, they worked with what they had. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different different collecting perspective. You know, some people want one thing versus another. And, and some people do all of it. You right. Know? I mean, I've got tactical weaponry as well. You know, yeah. in, in addition to the the uh, historically accurate items that I keep as like focal points of the collection, I'm not opposed to having a tactical katana under the bed. You know, sure. why not? Sure. You know, that's going to function better in a type of situation that you may need it in than a specifically historical, 100% accurate reproduction in, in a lot of cases. Right? Sure. So. There's niches for everything. Yeah.